Okay, hello. Hopefully you can hear me if you're gathered in a wee bit. I'll just wait till everybody's closer and about, about my person. About my person. Right, here we come. It's lovely to see you. You look amazing, my goodness. <laughs> okay, well, ladies, laddies, <laughs> It's wonderful to see you here and you're all looking completely gorgeous. We're so grateful to you for coming today and sharing in this remarkable time with us, this event. Um, so we're here to mark the occasion and remember the grand dam that we're here for. Today's our big celebration of the incredible life force and the irrepressible and the truly irreplaceable Polly. And I'm sure you'll agree that Polly would absolutely love this celebration. She'd be laughing, she'd be greeting, she'd be cackling, throwing her head back. She would love the shape this day's taken. And most of all, she'd love that you're all here right now. She loved her friends so much. You'll maybe know that Pauline and I grew up in Dundee after the family moved back from Canada in 1969. So, Pauline was almost five at that point. I was just six weeks old and we came over in a big ocean liner. I think it was the Empress of England or it might have been some another. There were a few crossings, you know, but I think it was that one. Um, and my dad's got this amazing Super 8 film of that crossing. And there's Pauline, like she's five years old. She's fleeing about the decks. She's already a giant. <laughs> and she's organizing everybody's kids and games and spreading all this joy. And there she was, five years old, a leader, a role model. Just amazing. Um, we really hoped for Baxter Park today. We didn't want you to be wet and miserable. But, you know, Baxter Park's full to the brim of really powerful memories for all of us as a family. Um, me and Pauline lived at the bottom of the park, so we spent the bulk of our childhood years just wandering about there, really. Um, and it filled our imaginations. Baxter Park, as I say, it was just yards away from Eden Street. And it was just such a magical playground of imagination, endless creative invention. Pauline and Emil, don't know, is Emil here, Emil Thompson, created a lovely project in Baxter Park a few years ago. And it was like music and verse and poetry and panels around the park. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have seen it, but it is online. So it's like ba a Baxter Park state of mind. And it's a really good thing to have a look at if you want. You hear Pauline's voice, she, she's, such, she's speaking a lot of her poems. It's brilliant, so, so good. So. Anyway, I've got loads of strong memories of Pauline in the park. Some of them are quite hilarious. So I'm sure you can imagine that as a teenager, Pauline was headstrong, mischievous, lassie. She had no concern for local park bylaws. <laughs> she was unda undaunted by the local parky. To the uninitiated, the parky was that sort of sinister janitor type <laughs> in charge of the park facilities, but generally misanthropic to all, especially to children. Well. Pauline and her friend Christine were fascinated by tennis, Billie Jean King, Chris Evert, and they had this habit of like breaking into the tennis courts to play for hours each night. So the parquet, when he arrived, 12-year-old Pauline and her pal would pretend to be French or German. So, <laughs> picture the scene. Je ne comprends pas. Mais pardon, monsieur, je vous en prie. Or, my favourite, their German phrase, which, which they would shout at the parquet, Mein Bein, es tut mir weh, es liegt auf dem Boden. Which apparently means, my leg hurts, it's lying on the ground. <laughs> so, the parquet had no idea what to do with them, really. And then the pavilion, well of course it's transformed now, you can tell I wrote this, thinking that you would have been at the park today. Um, the pavilion, back then, was just a, a hovel of pigeon shit and glue bags, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, lovely now, but for a kid, you know, that sense of like, abandoned spaces and um, danger and adrenaline was really kind of what made you like the park at all, wasn't it? So it was wonderful. Daisy Hill, really magical, fairyland space for us as kids. And it still kind of has that feel, I think. So yeah, so, you know, it got me thinking that, you know, Dundee, Baxter Park, Stobswell, these were all really rich environments for Pauline's creative imagination. And after five years of living at large in, in London, age 17 to 22, Pauline returned to Dundee in 1988, and she never really left Dundee and Angus after that. Of course, she travelled, but 
Come, she made a home here, she made a life here, she worked here, and she made her mark in such a significant way on the town and the community. Hence, everybody that's here today. Um, God knows how she did it, combining motherhood at 23, being a single parent, yet carving out an illustrious creative career. And I think Dundee was really important in that at the time. Um, Babs McCool, Dudd Apart Centre, Dundee Rep, all of these and other spaces in Fife and beyond. That's where she made her mark personally and in collaboration. That's really an important thing. Always in collaboration with other people, which was so lovely. And it wasn't sort of Dundee Money Faith Tapeport area that she wrote her huge body of music and lyrics. And then, of course, that continued right until the end of her life. Um, she created festivals in the area, she created public events, she, she gave birth to music clubs, and then through her drama work, her mental health work, her creative advocacy, and her community outreach, she touched the lives of so, so many people who were inspired and encouraged and often mentored by her. And here at Hospital Field House, Pauline was a regular collaborator, practitioner, performer for many years, both in her role as Expressive Arts Coordinator for Angus Council and as a creative artist and musician herself. And Pauline and Stephen, as the Onion Club, performed here many a time to sell out rooms and many of you all have been at those gigs. So a huge thanks to Simon, Lucy and Scott and the rest of the staff here today for helping us to put this event together. It's just brilliant to be here. So thank you very much. So, it's just lovely to be here with you all as we celebrate Pauline and all our amazing creative projects and ideas. Life will never be the same without her. But we do have this incredible legacy of friendship and music and performing and songs and writing and so many shared memories. Pauline really did talk about her friends constantly. There are people here that I don't know that I really feel I know because she talked about them so much. And I really mean that, you know, it's quite something. Um, so yeah, I feel that we know you all. She had such love and enthusiasm for her friends, such interest in the lives and the projects of other people. She really, really celebrated other people's plans and endeavours. So, you know, it's something to ask you. You're here today. If you wanted to post anything onto the uh, events page, Pauline Fest, you know, like just a wee, a wee film or something, just telling us how you know Pauline or a funny thing you remember about or something that you did together. I mean, that would just be so lovely after this event to be able to go on and for us all to see that all in the one place. I'd love that. Um, or you might create a poetic word bath. <laughs> Three words that spring to mind when you think about Paulina. So, to our toast, without further ado, to Pauline. <laughs> to Pauline, always bubbling with ideas. She drew you into a magical world of creativity and possibility. Those curious blue eyes and her vibrant smile, once seen, were never forgotten. Her lust for life, her generosity towards so many, were just such incredible gifts that she always shared. So, let's raise our glasses to the sky as we toast this classy, sassy and irrepressible lassie to Pauline. Oh. 